I want us to look at something's happening halfway around the world. A thousand private jets flew to Davos, Switzerland. I find this interesting because the purpose there, the World Economic Forum, it happens every year, and they go to Switzerland and they sit around and congratulate themselves on how much smarter they are than the rest of us, how much better they are than the rest of us, how much better educated they are than the rest of us, and how they know so much more than the rest of us. And this week was one of those just amazing weeks where you had people like John Kerry who unapologetically goes to the podium and says, we're very special people. Whoever imagined that people as smart as us could sit around and be able to save the planet. He actually said that. And uh, this is one that I find incredible. There is one of the people at the conference whose daughter apparently pointed out that if he's going to go and try to be against carbon emissions, maybe he ought not to eat meat anymore. Let's watch this. Can you advocate for these zero carbon value chains if you still eat meat? And so I stopped eating meat. Now the math would say, well, you need to stop eating meat 11 years to compensate for a flight to Thailand. Yes, but if a billion people stop eating meat, I tell you it has a big impact. That's it. That's, that's the answer to all this climate stuff. Just quit eating meat. Let's put all the steakhouses out of business. Let's, uh, let's end all of the hamburger places that exist around the world. Let's just stop that. But, oh, it's okay for these guys to fly their private jets and spew more carbon in a day than most people will blow in a lifetime. But they don't eat meat. This case, this guy says, his daughter says, how can you be so for climate? And then you eat meat. So I stopped eating meat. My kids come to me. They're all grown. But if they come to me and says, pups, how come you're out there eating meat? I'll be honest with them because I like it. It tastes good. Al Gore, we haven't seen him for a while. Right. And when we do, it's like, wow, they must have let him on a weekend pass from the asylum because he sounds like a nut. Listen to this. The accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day on the Earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Oh, he's pretty worked up about all this. I, I tell you, one of the things that I would like to ask him, if I had the chance, I don't guess I'll get to, you know, he, along with the Obamas and John Kerry, all own beachfront property, okay? Yeah. Which I got no problem with. I think that's wonderful. Sure. Hey, beautiful. I, I don't blame you one bit. Happy for you. But if you think it's about to fall into the ocean, why would you buy beachfront property? If the waters are boiling, why would you buy something you couldn't put your toes in? Because boiling is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. That's some pretty hot water. You can't take a bath in much more than 110. So I'm just wondering, these boiling waters, where are these? I, I live in a state that is very proud of Hot Springs, Arkansas, that has natural hot springs coming out from the ground. But it's not boiling. They're, they're nice and warm and they're therapeutic, but they don't boil anybody. You don't get cooked like a crab in them. So <laughs> what in the world is he talking about? I don't know. He was spewing a lot of numbers and a lot of, a lot of words. Whew. Almost a word salad, almost. <laughs> I, I want to remind everybody who were maybe in a school somewhere in the late 60s, early 70s, to remember that we were told in the early 70s that we were facing an absolute climate disaster, global cooling. That's right, global cooling. And if we didn't do something within 10 years, by 1980, we would all turn into human popsicles and the glaciers would go all the way down to the Mid-South and everything would be a massive ice age. And that didn't happen. Right. So then it was the ozone layer in the 80s. The ozone layer, if you use hairspray and dump that fluorocarbon into the air by spraying a deodorant can or hairspray, 
the ozone layer will deplete and we'll all be cry, uh, fried to a crisp. Remember that? <laughs> yes. We had to do it within 10 years. It's always a 10-year thing. Mm -hmm. 10 years is all we got. It's an emergency. And so a lot of people quit using hairspray. And a lot of people quit using deodorant, which really was problematic. Yeah, that's a problem. Aye. And the next thing you know, it got to be 1990, and we weren't all dead, and we didn't turn into French fries. We we're going to be popsicles, then French fries. And that didn't happen. So then we had a new one. It was global warming. And so then we could spend the next decade. When that didn't happen, then it just became climate change. So that way, whichever way the gate swings, we're covered. It's climate change. You know what I think? These people are crazy. They're just stark raving nuts. And they, all they really want to do is worship the creation instead of the creator. Mm. Let me make it real clear. I believe in planet stewardship. I truly do. I'm a conservationist. I do not believe we should pollute. I do not believe we should ignore taking good care of this planet. You know why? Not because John Kerry says so, because God says so. Mm. I'm a Christian. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I do not believe that I own the resources of the earth, but I do believe God has given them to me to improve my life and enjoy them. But he's given those resources so that I will be a steward, a caretaker of them, and I should leave them in as good or better shape than I found them. So I, I do that out of spiritual conviction, if you will, not because Al Gore is screaming something about boiling waters, but I don't worship what God made. I worship the God who made it. And the reason that I have a fundamental difference with these climate people is they don't worship the God of creation. They worship the creation of their own God themselves. That's a problem.